I was experiencing days where I felt focused and energized, productive and happy, and then they were followed by days where I would not only feel unmotivated, but almost depressed, and I really didn't feel like doing anything. Can you relate to this waxing and waning of mood and motivation? I knew dopamine was involved. That's responsible for primarily for our motivation, but I wanted to understand more about what I could do to help myself naturally. I started researching and I learned information that frankly changed my life for the better on how to really naturally boost my mood, stay motivated, and stay happy. I'm gonna share with you what I learned in this video. Now this video might be a touch longer than most of my videos, but this is life-changing stuff that I really think can benefit everyone. This information is from several sources, but primarily from Anna Lemke's book, uh, Dopamine Nation, uh, Andrew Huberman's podcast. He's a neurobiologist from Stanford Medical School and from Scott Adams. Now I encourage you to listen even more than once and, and take some notes. Now the focus of this video is not on what is happening in the world today. We can't control that, but we the focus is on what you can do in your life, what you have control over, if you want to improve your mood and your motivation and your happiness. Now I'm leaving out pharmaceutical drugs on purpose because my intention of the video is to review what we can do naturally without a prescription. No, I'm not against medications. It, it's just not my particular focus of this video. So first, from a neurobiological perspective, your mood, your level of motivation, and your happiness involves neurotransmitters, neuromodulators, and hormones in the brain. Now, I'm going to discuss three of the most relevant ones here. That's serotonin, dopamine, and oxytocin. So the neurotransmitter serotonin helps us to be happy, it helps regulate our mood and appetite and our sleep. And the neuromodulator dopamine helps us to feel motivated and feel pleasure, among other things. And the hormone oxytocin helps us to feel loved, bonded, and connected to others. Now there are other neurotransmitters and modulators and hormones, but the three I mentioned are really of central importance to maintaining our mood, motivation, and overall happiness. So let's begin with looking at the neurotransmitter serotonin. Now, as I said, serotonin plays a crucial role in regulating mood, appetite, and sleep. Now, while there is no one definitive way to naturally increase serotonin levels, there are a number of strategies that have been shown to be effective in boosting the serotonin production and activity. So here are some proven ways to increase your serotonin naturally. Number one is exercise. Regular physical exercise, especially aerobic exercise, has been shown to increase serotonin production and release in the brain. Number two is sunlight. Exposure to sunlight can help serotonin levels, particularly in the morning. Number three is diet. Consuming foods that are high in tryptophan, an amino acid that's a precursor to serotonin, can help to increase serotonin levels. Now, examples of these foods include things like chicken and turkey, eggs, nuts and seeds, and cheese. Number four is meditation and mindfulness. Practices such as meditation and mindfulness can help to reduce stress, and that in turn can help your serotonin levels. Number five is massage therapy. Massage therapy has been shown to increase serotonin production and reduce cortisol levels, a hormone that can interfere with serotonin activity. Number six, sleep. Getting enough sleep, as you probably already know, is important for maintaining healthy serotonin levels as serotonin production is just very closely linked to that sleep-wake cycle. And number seven is social support. Spending time with family and friends and engaging social activities that help you, you know, just in, enjoy can help increase that serotonin level and improve mood. Next, I'm going to talk about dopamine. Now, dopamine is a neuromodulator, and that means it has, it can influence and communicate between the neurotransmitters in the brain. Dopamine plays a major role in motivation, in pleasure, in reward, and even in body movement. 
Now, when our dopamine levels are up, we feel energized, motivated, and we generally experience pleasure. Now, there are prescription medications that can increase dopamine levels that are prescribed to patients that have depleted levels of dopamine with conditions like Parkinson's disease, restless leg syndrome, depression, and attention deficit uh, disorder. Now, but there are also natural ways that you can boost your dopamine level. So first I'm gonna discuss how to do that, how to boost your dopamine level naturally. And then I'm gonna go into why you don't always wanna do that or have to be careful in how you do that. So there are some unique issues with boosting dopamine too much that can result in lowering your overall baseline level of dopamine. We all have a baseline level of dopamine. Some of us have more, others have less, but we can have some influence over our dopamine level based on how we live our life. So to naturally boost your dopamine, you can, number one, exercise. Exercise is a great way to increase dopamine levels. Even moderate exercise can increase your dopamine. As long as you enjoy the exercise and you don't dread it, uh, number two is getting enough sleep. Lack of sleep can cause this decrease in dopamine. So make sure that your, you know, sleep is really crucial. Number three, eat foods that boost dopamine. And these are foods that are rich in tyrosine, and that's an amino acid that helps to produce dopamine in the brain. And uh, foods, it's in foods like chicken, turkey, uh, fish, eggs, nuts, seeds. They're, those are all good sources of tyrosine. Number four, drinking coffee or yerba mata tea, I just ordered some myself, increases the number of neural uh, receptors in the brain that can take up dopamine and that helps to increase dopamine. Number five, listening to music. Listening to music can help boost dopamine, especially music that you enjoy and find pleasurable. Number six is meditate. Meditation can help boost dopamine levels by reducing stress and increasing feelings of calm and happiness. Number seven, spending time in nature. Uh, spending time in nature can boost the dopamine levels and it can help reduce stress and increase your feelings of, of well being. Uh, number eight is set and achieve goals. Now, setting and achieving goals can help boost dopamine as it can give you this kind of sense of accomplishment and satisfaction. Completing tasks that are a bit challenging can also give you that added boost. But listen to this sentence closely. Enjoying the process or the effort of doing a task gives you the best dopamine boost versus just focusing on completing the task. So that's called kind of having this growth mindset where you're focusing on effort and striving, you know, striving to be better, enjoying that process versus just the end reward. Number nine is socializing. Spending time with friends and family can really boost your dopamine levels as long as those social interactions are pleasurable. Number 10, a positive subjective feelings. Now, this is a subjective element can increase your dopamine. And that means kind of how you feel about something. So let's say that I enjoy going for a walk, then I'm gonna get a dopamine boost. But if I dread taking a walk, I may not get that same boost. So it's based on subjectively how I feel about something and whether or not, you know, that, that will influence the dopamine. And number 11 is cold water immersion therapies. Now, these cold water therapies, getting into cold water, maybe having an iced bath, have been shown to drastically, or I should say dramatically, increase dopamine. I, I can't tolerate the cold like that, but if you can tolerate it, I would look into the research on cold water immersion therapies. You can check up uh, a man they call the Iceman, um, uh, Wim Hof, or Wim Hof is his name. Uh, now, things that deplete dopamine include telling yourself that you don't like something. Um, you know, saying like, I hate this as you're doing something is going to deplete your dopamine. Using melatonin, I was kind of surprised by that. Using melatonin depletes dopamine. 
And any addictive behaviors are going to deplete your dopamine. Engaging in something, whether it's a drug or an activity repetitively, will lose your, you'll lose the enjoyment for that activity uh, because your dopamine is being depleted. Now, there are some unique issues with doing activities to boost your dopamine or, or pleasure too often uh, that result in lowering your overall baseline level of dopamine. It's, it's almost like your brain wants you to stay in balance. It wants you to stay in moderation. We only have a certain amount of dopamine available to release into our brain. So think of dopamine as a well full of water and you only have a certain amount every day. So every time you do something pleasurable, you pump a little water out of that well. And this is called getting a spike of dopamine. And if you keep pumping that dopamine out by engaging in these repetitive behaviors, pretty soon you've pumped your well dry. Now, once you do that, it may take days to refill that well again. So if you're doing repetitive behaviors or you're loading you know, too many pleasurable activities on any given day, you may have a dry well afterwards and even the days that follow. So I can remember my dad saying, well, you can never have too much fun. But he was kind of wrong about that because you can have too much fun if you keep having fun repetitively in the same way. You know, soon you'll experience no pleasure at all. So let's say that you gamble every day or you play video games every day or you check your social media over and over again or you eat a lot of sweets or watch, you know, binge watch programs. But whatever it is for you, every time you repeat that activity, you'll have less and less pleasure. Your dopamine well has run dry. You've depleted it. And it is, you're going to begin to lose interest and even could fall into a depression. Now, the more severe the addiction and the depression, the longer it takes your brain to regain its natural balance of dopamine. So look at what you do repetitively and consider making the decision to stop. You know, put your phone device in another room, limit your gaming, limit your social media, what, whatever the repetitive behavior is for you. Maybe try and experiment for 30 days and see if you change that behavior, if your mood and your motivation goes up. Now, another interesting thing I learned about dopamine is that you can layer pleasurable activities together and you can end up having a huge dopamine spike, but the higher the spike in dopamine, the lower it falls afterwards. And the high spikes can lower your baseline level. So let's say you love to run. And while you run, you listen to music or a podcast and, uh, and you know, maybe you love to run with a buddy and then you like to have a favorite drink before you run and you reward yourself afterwards with your favorite treat, you're likely going to experience a huge dopamine spike. But after that spike, your dopamine is going to fall below your normal dopamine baseline level, meaning you're going to have a crash and a depletion in your motivation and pleasure afterwards. And that could go on for days. There's a great podcast by Andrew Huberman, and he's a neurobiologist from Stanford Medical School that discusses this phenomenon. Now, I'll leave you a link if you want to go kind of deeper into that neurobiology. But he recommends not stacking your dopamine increasing behaviors together, or at least not too often. So if you like to run, like I just gave that example, run without music, run without the podcast, or run some days alone and some days with your buddy on other days. He recommends what he calls an intermittent reward schedule, spreading out and varying your dopamine spiking behaviors, and then being careful not to layer them too often. So our goal is really to maintain that dopamine baseline and experience a peak in dopamine intermittently you know, here and there. And finally, I want to touch on the hormone oxytocin. So oxytocin is naturally produced by the body and we refer to it like as the love hormone or the cuddle hormone because it's released during social bonding activities like hugging or kissing and sex. But there are natural ways to increase oxytocin, oxytocin levels in the body. Uh, number one is physical touch. You know, this hugging and kissing is going to re release our natural, you know, oxytocin. Also, petting our, our, our pets can do the same thing. 
Number two is massage. Um, having a massage uh, can release oxytocin, oxytocin in the body. Number three, spending time with loved ones. Spending time with family and friends uh, can increase those levels. Number four is meditation. So research has shown that meditation can increase oxytocin levels in the body. So try incorporating that into your daily routine. Number five is exercise. You can release oxytocin in the body. It, you know, they're recommended is maybe 30 minutes of moderate exercise a day. Number six is laughter. Laughter really releases oxytocin levels. It's why it probably feels so good. So spend time with people who make you laugh. Watch a funny movie. Whatever you can do that can make you laugh. Number seven is giving and receiving compliments. Giving and receiving compliments also helps us to increase our oxytocin level. And eight is listening to music that can also release oxytocin in the body. Choosing music that you enjoy and that makes you feel good. Number nine is warm baths. So back when I was talking about dopamine, it was cold water. Now oxytocin is warm water. So taking a warm water bath can release oxytocin into the body. Number 10 is eating certain foods. Um, certain foods like dark chocolate, almonds, and walnuts can release oxytocin. Now at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I was having these more productive and energetic days, and then these less motivated days. I've been concentrating on doing a better job of incorporating some of these recommendations into my daily life. And I, I have been noticing that when I do that, I do feel better. So it isn't always easy. You know, there's no perfection here, but much of you know our mood, maybe motivation and happiness is under our control. Now, this is not always easy, but I'm myself, I'm now more aware of what I need to do. I look at it really as just kind of getting back to the basics of being human. I'm focusing more on my diet, I'm exercising more, I'm getting sunlight, spending time in nature, I'm trying to socialize as much as I can, and I engage in meaningful work that puts me in a state of learning and sharing. Now, I'm hoping that these strategies are going to be helpful to you. Now, they're not always a substitute for mental health treatment. If you're struggling with mental health, this information can be helpful, but it's important to seek out guidance of a mental health professional. So I'd love to hear what you thought of the video, what you found most helpful. Until next time, I'll see you in session. Take care. Bye-bye.